Hey everybody, I'm Alan Schaefer at Custom Garden Solutions. In today's exciting episode, we're taking you to Peoria, Arizona, which is a suburb of Phoenix, to share with you a raised bed garden installation. Now we've already met with the customer to answer a lot of questions and to discuss what they want in a garden to help diagnose what the best garden solution is. What we came up with is a four by eight raised bed garden that'll be about two and a half feet high. It'll have ledges so that you can sit or kneel on the side of the bed to work in the garden. And the ledge also makes the raised bed much more attractive since it'll be in the main area of the yard near a beautiful swimming pool. The other main feature of the raised bed is that the corner post will extend eight feet high so that you can use the corner post to attach screens to keep the birds away, shade cloths to help control the Arizona sun in the summer, and frost covers for December and January when temperatures at night in the Phoenix area can drop below freezing. Now that doesn't happen very often, but each season it usually happens a couple times. Next we'll bring in some compost, which is a mixture of food scraps, finely ground trees and leaves, horse, horse manure from a local trusted stable, and rock dust from a mining operation in Flagstaff which is about two hours from here. We'll be installing drip irrigation and a timer. And the last thing we'll do today with the customer is to plant the entire bed from seed. Once we're done, is our, once we're done our plan is to come back three times in two to three week intervals to check up on Trisha's progress and to answer any of her questions about watering or plant choices or disease, pests, and other maintenance issues. Our goal is to teach her to grow so that she becomes proficient and confident enough that she fires us because she doesn't need our help anymore. It's kind of weird, right? But our business goal is to do such a good job for people that the word of mouth creates referrals. Something to remember is it's very hard to film an episode while focusing on the customer. So please understand this is kind of an overview episode. One of the benefits of our services is that it may take us four to five hours to install your garden and the whole time we'll be available to talk with you about what we're doing and why and to answer any of your questions. So let's get to it. Today we're in Goodyear, Arizona. We're putting in a four by eight raised bed. It's going to be about 21, 22 inches tall. It's going to include a ledge. Originally we're going to go with a eight foot four by four so they can do some season extension they can put bird uh, chicken wire over it keep birds out if they find they need to they can put uh, shade cloth over it when it gets into the 100 degree weather here in the summer they can put poly over it uh, to prevent it from freezing we're going to go with the eight foot four by four initially we can always cut the eight by eight, uh, eight, eight, eight foot board down we can't uncut it. So since the bed's going to be about uh, two feet or so, they'll have six feet of space above on each corner of the bed so they can attach shade cloth, chicken wire, poly if they need to. Progress. Get the uh, first two boards on. Customer helped me put up the uh, hold them uh, four by fours. So they're eight foot tall. I'm six foot tall. So there you go. Again, so, uh, season extension stuff like that. They also serve to hold the boards together. Uh, one secret is I'm going to start bringing in the compost because I can dump it over this a lot easier than I can over when I put the uh, finishing board on the top. So uh, we're making good time now. It wasn't level when we got here. It took forever. A little bit anal about uh, uh, leveling it. I'm kind of a belt and suspenders guy. I know it's only a raised bed garden, but I like everything level and even, at least when we start and uh, it's more likely to stay that way once it's 
exposed to the weather. So. So now we've added the four by fours. These will serve as a nice way for the ledge to set. So there's plenty of stability. And also we'll hold these three boards together. So when the weight of the boards push out, um, the three boards will act as one, make them a lot stronger. It's kind of, again, a belt and suspenders approach. And if anybody doesn't know what a belt and suspenders approach is, is that wear belt and you can wear suspenders because you don't need to wear both. We kind of designed this with belt and suspenders, so it's super duper strong. Um, this is, um, the boards are drilled into the 4x4s and they're drilled into each other, so this isn't going anywhere. Alright, so this is a pressure regulator. This is a, uh, it's called a Ten, but it's a uh, one and a half to seven gallons per minute. And it's connected to a hose adapter. You can see there's a little arrow. That's the way you want water to flow. What we've got is the pressure regulator. Very important when you're using a drip hose. adapter is connected to the drip hole, the uh, pressure regulator, pressure regulator, pressure regulator, easy for me to say, holds adapter. I'm going to put a right angle here so it'll fit over the ledge. Then we've got what's called a T, which 
goes in each direction. I'm going to stake this down. These are these eight inch stakes. Get plenty of these. And then uh, we'll connect the drip hose to the half inch poly. Each of these has an end cap so the water doesn't come out. So right now if we were to connect this, no water would come out. When we, when we pop some holes in here, then it will uh, let some water out. All right, so now we've got our pressure regulator, our hose adapter, right angle. Here's where the ledge will sit, right here. And this will go inside the end of the, the four foot end of the garden. You need a T and you got two end caps. These just screw on. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this really, really cool hole puncher. I don't know if you see that. And you press it right in the middle there. A little piece of metal pops out and pokes a hole. Now I've got one that you can dig in. It's a little harder to get it. Um, it's a little harder to work with. This, you just put the hose on. And I won't punch a hole here, but and you squeeze it and it pokes a hole, the perfect size hole. Then you take one of these hose adapters or drip hose adapters and this end, I don't know if you can see that. You should be able to see it. I wish I don't know if you can see that. There's no reason why you can't see that. But anyway, this end, it's got a little, um, goes in and then it stays in so you put it where you punched your hole. Alright, so you put it in where you punched a hole and then you attach the drip hose to this. I'm going to measure some, uh, some drip hose and I'll be back in a second. So now we're going to take the uh, little assembly we have here, put it in and we had a little unforeseen circumstance. So we're going to uh, keep this in place drill two holes, we'll run some wire through so that we can hold it down a little bit. And we'll get some uh, stronger wire someday in the future. I'm going to use the hole punching tool. I'm going to punch taking six drip lines. So it's every four inches. You know, six will be like kind of like this. It'll be kind of every four inches, like in a little grid.
I just punched the exhaust. This thing is really great. Paid a little extra and get one of these. So I'm just gonna, we know it's eight feet. It's an eight foot bed. So I don't need to measure it. <laughs> but we're gonna cut some um, eight foot strips. going to go into the half inch tube right here and this just kind of wiggle it on there kind of like the other stuff just kind of wiggle it on you can see here's actually where the fitting is so it's on there a good inch or inch and, inch and quarter and you just tighten it up nice and easy now you've got your drip tape. The drip tape is um, every four inches, every emitters are every four inches. And you're not going to be able to see inside here, but there's a little strip. It looks almost like it's copper. And you want the, the, the drip up for this application. So it's going to be up. The blue side is up. That's where the emitters are. And the bottom is going to be solid black. So it's, it's flat now. And when you fill it, you start the water, It'll fill up and go round. It'll have equal pressure. On each end of these, you put an end cap. And you can get the kinds that fold over, and then you kind of secure it like that. They're a little cheaper. You tend to like these better. They're a little more sturdier, less likely. And the same thing. But what's nice is they have these little oval on the end where you can hook and secure and you can move it around and work with it. So the same thing. Just goes on there. And just tighten it up. end cap, hose adapter, drip hose adapter, just to repeat, so you take the hose adapter, push it on, tighten it up, make sure it's nice and tight, take the end cap, push it on, in there nice tighten that up and we'll do a test run to test the pressure and if there's any problems we'll adjust it the other six, other four, so we have a total of six. All right, so now we've got six drip lines, drip hoses uh, in place. And I'm just gonna stake them down here for Trish. But I'm not gonna put too many stakes in. Put uh, one on each end and two in the middle. 
because when she plants, she's going to move these around. Get her, uh... Get her plants. Now the soil is really loose. So these inch stakes aren't, uh... <laughs> being a whole lot of help. Some of these there's a little extra on the end. And you may have to bend this around a little bit. So the little extra on the end isn't going to hurt anything. We've talked about that with Trish, who's the customer here. And she uh, she can cut the ends off and put the end caps on very easily. So we've used uh, 24, or so stakes. Now, if this were my garden, I might use if this regard. My garden, I might use a few less stakes, but I'll, I'll leave her a couple extra. That way she can use them as she wishes. And uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to test it out. We'll test it out live. You might you might have a major uh, <laughs> we might have a major issue. Maybe I'll get all wet. Everybody can laugh at me, and I'll become viral on YouTube. All right, so we're wrapping up. This is my friend Trish, and we put a. Four by eight raised bed garden in our backyard, right by our pool, and we've got a bunch of stuff planted, quite a bit of kale and some spinach and some lettuce and some radishes. And she's going to put some peppers in. We left some uh, pepper seeds and some tomatoes. Well, you gave me some seeds so I can plot some things like cantaloupe and cucumbers and a couple other seeds that I can't remember off the top of my head, but a couple of things that I can plant in a pot. So, so you're pretty excited? I am so excited. This is so awesome. The experience has been great. Ellen is very friendly, offered up a bunch of knowledge, is very knowledgeable willing to provide his knowledge, um, gave me lots of tips. I didn't feel rushed. He was very nice, patient with me, loved it. The experience was awesome. So she's ready to go. I'm going to come back uh, with this uh, package. You get three free follow-ups, so I'll be back here in about two weeks. And some of the radishes and other things will be coming up. I'll check for bugs. I'll check to see if they're healthy. You may have to thin out. Um, I overseeded because I want to make sure that we have good German uh, germination and that all of the four by eight gets used. So we overseed it, so we'll do a little thinning. Um, the second trip, I'll probably go over insect pressure and talk to, about things like diatomaceous earth and neem oil and using your fingers to squash bugs and other best practices. And then the third follow-up, probably in about six weeks, we'll just see how things are going. The radishes will be coming out and uh, we'll talk about what else she can pull out and put back in.
So I'm wrapping up for the day. I'll be back uh, at Trisha and Frank's house in a couple of weeks to do one of the three follow-ups. Um, job well done. Met two great people, Trisha and Frank, who were really easy to work with. Uh, they gave me water and very gracious hosts. Uh, I was working late uh, last night. They actually put out floodlights and put the lights around their pool so I could work and be safe. So uh, uh, although this uh, Custom Garden Solutions is a business, it's also great that I meet people and get to in interact with other gardeners who uh, love gardening just like, as much as I do. Um, Trish was, you know, hesitant to fail, and I told her just uh, just grow stuff. And uh, if you fail, throw it out. Don't don't grow again. Try something different. And she's got 60 minutes of free uh, consultation over the phone, three more visits, and I hope in a couple years when she's a uh, master gardener that she'll remember our uh, engagement here and say, boy, I'm glad that uh, um, I decided to work with Alan on the garden and Custom Garden Solutions because uh, it got me started and now I'm much more healthy and happy with uh, my life. So just wrapping up, have a good day. See you all again soon.